in previous lecture we studied the solution method of the hills equation that was based on the matrices now we will see there is another way of solving the hills equation and we will see in this lecture what we did earlier actually we reduced this equation to simple harmonic oscillator equation by keeping k constant in different different elements means we divided complete optics in pieces one piece may be of the one magnet and inside that piece k is constant and we solve that equation just like the simple harmonic oscillator equation this method which leads to matrices also known as piece wise solution of the Hill's equation again we can see that how the k varies it is just a repetition of something which we learned earlier but repetition is sometimes better to learn in effectively so suppose this is a bending magnet and we are plotting in the bottom graph k for this optics so in certain dipole magnet k may be zero what is that case in which a dipole magnet can produce k zero the first very case is it shouldn't have the gradient and then in the last example of last lecture we have seen that parallel edge magnet act just like the drift so if this is a parallel edge magnet without any gradient then k will be zero so assume that this kind of magnet is this so k is equal to zero now there is a focusing quadrupole again remember this is a convention when we say focusing quadrupole means it is focusing in the horizontal plane so k will be high here and it is again a convention that we make k positive for the uh, focusing quadrupole and height of this k is just the showing the magnitude of k for this quadrupole magnet so k will be just like here inside this quadrupole k has certain constant flow then again drift so k will be zero and then there is a defocusing quadrupole in this example so k will be plotted on the negative side and height of this plot is just similar to the magnitude of this defocusing quadrupole strength then there is again drift space so k is zero now here in this bending magnet there may be some k means it may have some gradient or it is not a parallel edge magnet so some k is there and you can see that direction of k is like the focusing quadrupole means it is focusing in the horizontal maybe a sector magnet like that kind of thing. however you can see that k is lower than quadrupole because this provides a weak focusing and quadrupole provides a strong focusing so in general in usually optics of charged particles the focusing effect of the dipole magnet is weaker than or not much significant in compared to the quadrupole and again there may be a quadrupole so again the k rises to this value and again a drift space k is zero so such kind of function uh, k may be defined by such type of function of s and in each piece we solve the equation of motion and give the solution this is known as piece by side now we see we can plot various trajectories various trajectories means trajectories associated with different initial conditions very easily using this piece by solution or matrices it is just an example in which you can see that the first element magnetic element is defocusing quadrupole second is focusing quadrupole and third is again a defocusing quadrupole and fourth is a focusing so this provides overall focusing 
if we choose carefully the strength of these quadrupole as well as distance between these two. So how the matrices can be used to produce the trajectories within different initial condition you will see in this video. So now as this trajectory reaches to this magnet all defocuses and then it focuses means it coming these are coming towards the design trajectory. Again this is a defocusing magnet the effect will be such kind of thing and lastly you will have a focusing magnet so all the trajectories again are coming towards the design trajectory. So you have an overall focusing solution for this case. Now is there any way to solve the Hayes equation really keeping k as a function of s? Is there any mathematical tool in which we need not to break the optics in pieces and for each optics we solve differently? Yes, definitely we have. Now suppose this is the picture of one of the trajectories which we plotted in the movie. Now you can see that this trajectory is going upside due to defocusing magnet and again due to focusing it is coming towards the design trajectory and again this defocusing magnet produces some effect of defocusing so angle with respect to design trajectory has been increased and again a focusing. So overall under the action of defocusing and focusing effect due to these quadrupole magnets the trajectory is seeing some kind of oscillatory behavior along the design trajectory. Means this trajectory shows some kind of oscillatory behavior and you can see in each trajectory of that movie that some kind of oscillatory nature is there. Means this focusing and defocusing effect actually produces some oscillation in the trajectories. These oscillations are known as beta clone oscillations and transverse beam dynamics is actually the studies of beta tron oscillations. So now we know that there will be some oscillatory type solution for the Hill's equation. Definitely these oscillations are not very simple. We cannot represent it by single sinusoidal or like that. So this may be because of the S dependence of K. S dependence of K means if you will choose S say s is equal to s1 you will get different k means different wavelength locally here and if you will put s is equal to s2 you will get a different wavelength locally here it means amplitude will also be a function of s keeping these two things in mind one oscillatory solution and second the amplitude may be the function of s we can have a trial solution of this equation so we can write down the trial solution like a b as a function of s cos phi s and phi c. Now because this is a second order differential equation we require at least two constant of motion that's why this a and phi 0 serve that purpose. So a and phi 0 can be obtained using the initial conditions. Now we dip, because this is our trial solution, so what should be the nature of B and phi? If we want to know that, we will put this trial solution into the Hill's equation. So for doing this thing, we have to obtain the x double prime, means second derivative of x with respect to so differentiate x with respect to s we will get now here amplitude itself is a function of s so we have differentiation of this amplitude also so a b prime s cos phi s plus phi naught minus a b this is the differentiation of the cosine term so cos phi s plus phi naught into phi this is the differentiation of phi with respect to s we don't know what is the dependence of phi on the s we will know 
by putting this term into the Hill's equation. So just we are putting phi prime as here. Again differentiating, so we will get x double prime this equation a b prime double prime cos a. I have omitted here the writing down again and again this s in the bracket. Keep it in mind that these quantities have dependence on x. So this a b double prime cos sine term minus a b prime sine term with phi prime and these all these terms when you differentiate these two terms you will get this equation this is an easy thing which you can do now we have x double prime and we also know what is our trial solution x so x double prime plus kx is equal to zero this is the hill's equation so using these two equations we can put into the hill's equation so you, we will get these when we will put these terms in the Higgs equation. This is the expression which we get. Now you can see here that this is true, uh, phi is a function of s. So this is true for everywhere. Whatever is the s, it should be the true because Higgs equation is valid everywhere. So cosine and sine coefficient should separately be zero to satisfy this equation. So let us do that. So here we collect the term with sign. So this is the first term with sign and this is the second term with sign. So the coefficient of sign is here is minus twice a b prime phi prime minus a b phi double prime is g. So this a cancels out. So we get and minus sign also you can make it for plus 2 p prime phi prime plus b phi double prime is c. This is the equation of the Now we want this equation can give you the relation between the amplitude and fix. B is the amplitude part which depends on the S and phi is the phase of those beta tron oscillations. So this equation actually relates amplitude with fix. If we multiply this equation again with B, it becomes perfect differential. Now you can see that this is a perfect differential and you differentiate it b square phi prime you will get the above equation. So this is the perfect differential of this b square phi prime. If you will differentiate it you will get 2 b b prime phi prime plus b square phi double which is the above. So now Differentiation of b square phi prime is zero. Means this term which is written inside the bracket must be a constant. So take the constant as one. So phi prime is equal to one by b Phi prime means you are writing in it as d phi by ds is equal to one by b square. Means how much phase advances per unit length? This is encompasses in 1 by b square. So instead of a square, if we have simple term beta, I replace b square by beta. So phi prime is 1 by beta. So we have a simple relationship and simple interpretation of this beta. This beta is now, you can say d phi by ds is equal to 1 by beta. So beta actually is the length of the optics for unit phase advance. So beta has a meaningful thing. It is the length of the optics equal to the length of the optics in which beta tron phase advances by unit. So here you can see that in the 
if you will calculate phase, it will comes out to be ds by p. So this is a bit different relation than the simple harmonic oscillator. In simple harmonic oscillator, what you have? Pi SHM is equal to omega t. So pi SHM varies linearly with the independent parameter t. Pi is directly proportional to t, but in the case of beta tone oscillation, it is not so. Pi varies with integration of ds by beta. So it has a complicated uh, relation with uh, independent parameter and visualization is a tricky. In the case of simple harmonic oscillator, the visualization of phase is quite easier. Here it is a quite tricky. Now in the solution, we can write down at the place of B, which was our trial solution, root beta using this relation. So our solution will be A root beta cos phi plus cos phi now. And this phi s is basically this. So our whole solution will be in the form of beta. Now as we have b root beta, so b prime will be this quantity, which is just the differentiation of beta and d beta by ds. And double derivative of b will be like this. So now if we make the coefficient of the cosine term 0, we will get the second equation. This equation was obtained, this equation was obtained using the coefficient of sine term equal to 0. So in this case, we will get the equation of beta. And this is the equation of beta, how it varies with s. This is a bit complicated. However, in later chapters, you will see that it can be reduced down to very simple form. So right now, we will not talk about this equation anymore in this lecture. Now, because our solution is a root beat cos phi plus chi omega, we can calculate x prime also very easily. Now here you can see the amplitude part beta has s dependence. So when we differentiate with s, beta has to be differentiated. So this is a 1 upon 2 root beta is the differentiation of root beta and d beta by t is there cos as it is and now root beta as it is and cos has been differentiated sin phi plus phi and then d phi by ds. Now d phi by ds we know this is a 1 by beta. Now what we are doing, what we are trying to do, actually we have x is equal to x upon root beta if we write down this will be a cos phi just like the simple harmonic oscillator and in the case of simple harmonic oscillator if we differentiate x we get the velocity in that case velocity is also omega a sin phi with minus sin so can we get some form of differentiation of x similarly. So we are trying to do that. So if uh, this a root beta here cos phi plus phi naught can be put in the form of x upon a root beta in this equation and when we put x upon a root beta at the place of cos a phi we will have only sine term in the equation. This a and a will be cancelled out. So finally, you will get x prime beta minus half beta prime x is equal to minus a root beta sine phi plus phi. This is exactly what we wanted. Now right hand side contains only sine term and here right side contains only cos term. I want to put one thing here. In the case of simple harmonic oscillator, we have x is equal to a cos omega t. So if we differentiate it, means we calculate x dot. When I am using the dot, it means it is a d by dt. When I am using the prime, it means it is d by dx. So x dot will be equal to minus omega a sin omega t. 
Now from this you can get x upon a is equal to cos omega and from here you can write down x dot upon omega a is equal to sine omega. So using these relations you can get x by a square plus x dot upon omega a square is equal to 1. So in coordinates x and velocity you get an ellipse in the case of simple harmonic oscillator. Can we get such kind of any curve in the case of beta tron oscillations? We are trying to do that. That's why first term we obtained x is equal to a root beta cos phi and now some variable combination we want in the form of something into sin phi. If we end, we have obtained this relation that something into sin phi. So now we square and add, we can get such kind of solution which we obtained in the case of simple harmonic oscillator. However, here you can see that it involves d beta by dx, d beta by dx, and it is with minus half scale. Let us define this is the new variable. Say this is a. So now our equation become x prime beta plus alpha x is equal to a root beta sine phi. And our displacement is x is equal to a root beta cos phi. So now we have a root beta cos phi and here a root beta sin phi. So if we square it and add it, we can get here 1 and our equation will be like this x square. I have done the square of the first LHS term. The second LHS term is also has been squared. It will be equal to a square beta the phase part has been removed because of the cos square phi plus sin square phi. So now we open this bracket, so this will be 1 plus alpha square x square and rearranging the terms, putting together the terms with x square and x x prime and x prime is equal to a square theta. So we here, a was the constant, we took the amplitude as a root beta in which beta has the s dependence while a is the constant. So if we divide this equation by beta then in RHS we will get a constant quantity. Let us do that. So this will be 1 plus alpha square by beta. Here beta will be cancelled out and this will be cancelled and this. So 1 plus alpha square by beta See, this is another variable namely gamma. So we have now three parameters. One is the beta which defines amplitude at a particular location of S. Then we have differentiation of beta with respect to S and we relate it with a new parameter alpha and now alpha and beta com combined gives you a new parameter gamma. So definitely we have three parameters but two are of these independent can be calculated using the values of 2. So there are basically two independent parameters which we have introduced. Now the above equation becomes gamma x square plus twice alpha x x prime plus beta x prime square is equal to a square. Now you can see one thing here that left part contains gamma alpha beta. This beta basically is a function of s alpha because it is a differentiation of beta it is again a function of s and gamma it is also a function of s so in lhs part of this equation we have three parameters which have s dependence and also we have x and x prime which 
is the coordinate of any particle's trajectory along S. It also varies with S. So, LHS part is a function of S and the RHS is a constant. Means the combination of such S dependence part makes a constant. Means we have found the invariant of the motion. It is just like that in the course of mechanics, you find that energy is the invariant of motion. Here we find in another invariant of motion, this is the combination of these. In case of energy, you have x and px, these two are variable and that vary within with the time in any dynamical system, but the combination of potential energy and kinetic energy remains constant in the case of conservative system. Similarly, here in LHS part, we have S dependence terms. The combination of these terms gives a constant here. So, this is the invariant of motion. 